All right, hey everyone. So let's take a look at how we erase the SD card. This is on a Mac, and so the PC will be slightly different. But we'll take a look at this, at least have an idea of how it works. So the SD card is already plugged into the back of the Mac. I can see uh, that it's showing up here in the boot and the recovery, because of the two different partitions. And so on a Mac, is really pretty simple. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to this magnifying glass and we're going to search disk utility you can see that it pops up and what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to check this and right here is the SD card the 7.95 gig we're going to choose erase because it's under 32 gig we do want this MS-DOS FAT um, Sometimes this already comes up pre-selected, um, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it'll show this Mac OS extended and you don't want that. You want MS-DOS FAT for SD card under 32 gig. And we're going to choose Erase, it's going to show you all these partitions are in there and we're going to go ahead and wipe that out. Once that is done, as you just saw there, we can then go ahead and load. And so. Uh, what we want to do is here is SD card and I'm going to load this zip file. While the zip file is loading I just to uh, show you where I received this from so if I go ahead and open this up noobs can be found on raspberrypi.org and so this is this the place to go to go check everything out that you need to know about Raspberry Pi I encourage you to explore and check this out. But if you go here to downloads, you're going to see new noobs and Raspbian right here. And so we're going to go ahead and click this. And we want this is what we installed, this download zip file right here. You're going to click that, and that's what's going to install to your computer. And that's what this file is right here. So I dragged that over. And I'm just going to wait for it to copy over. It's going to take a little bit of time because my card reader is an older card reader. And it's also a 1 gig file, as you can see uh, right here. On your PC, a lot of times you can just right click on your My Computer the SD card and you can just choose to format that. I would not recommend doing the quick format, do the full extensive format and just wipe out the whole entire card here. So this is about done. When this happens, I'll just finish this here. You should get the noise in just a second. There we go. You go ahead and double click it and extract it. It's going to pull all the files out as you can see right here. And so when this is done, we'll go ahead and show you what to do next. So once all this converts over and the, all the information is extracted, we can't have it in the folder because uh, the boot up won't read it. And so you need to select everything out of the folder. And you just need to drag it out. So you're going to need to put it in the boot directory. What I mean by boot directory is that it's just in the open setting of the card. It's not in a folder anywhere. Once you have that, you can go ahead and make sure you eject that disk. And you are now ready to insert that SD card in your Raspberry Pi and go to the next setting of the installation process. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so once we have our SD card formatted, the program files extracted, moved out of the folder, and ready to go and boot up in a Raspberry Pi, I have everything ready. I have my keyboard, my mouse, I have my cable to my monitor. Um, a common mistake that is often found when loading up Raspberry Pi that I've seen time and time again with students is when they plug the card in, the screen doesn't turn on, and so I know every monitor is different. On the back of this monitor, I obviously have HDMI, I've got DVI, and I've got VGA. 
So whatever port you use, depending on the cable that you have and the monitor that you can use, the same thing would hold true for your TV. You wanna make sure that on the monitor setting, you're switched to that source. So many times kids will tell me their screen isn't working or the Raspberry Pi is broken, not working. And actually it's just a matter of changing the source of the monitor that you're using and it works just fine. So let's go ahead and plug this in. I'm actually gonna turn this power off. And I'm going to click that in. I'm going to add my power. You can see the red light here. You're going to see the green blink on and off. That's a sign that it's working. My screen's going. Red is not a bad sign. If you see that it's now trying to read the material files. Okay, this is good. Now, a couple key things here. You're going to check because this is what we want to have recommended so we can actually get our programs up and running. Uh, we're going to click data partition. Down here at the very bottom, very, very important, make sure you choose the English keyboard and language. So English US, keyboard US. I know it's hard to see on the screen, but make sure you have that. Once you got those things, check, check, English and US. Go ahead and click install. It's going to overwrite everything. Yes, we know that. And now it's telling you that we're working on the SD card. You're going to be able to start programming very soon. So we're going to let this extract this file system. It does take some time. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. So we'll go ahead and let that work. And we'll go ahead and show you then what you're going to have when it boots up. All right, so we're right at 100% here. Boom, there it is. This is the operating system is installed successfully. So we click OK. It's then going to do the reboot here. The famous Raspberry Pi screen. Loading, loading, loading. A bada bing. Bada boom. And we should be in business here very soon here. All right, let's uh, see. We should get the good old Raspberry Pi here in just a second. So you can see that we're rocking and rolling and in business. And there you have it. And so we've got a lot of new options up here in our menu, a lot more to our programming palette. We got a lot more we can do. We have Office, so we can do Open Office, all our programming, access to internet. So we have a lot more things we can do there. Games, when we get into programming in Scratch, we have Pac-Man, some different things. Now this one we can get into our joystick and our OK console, which is what we're going to be getting into next. So lots of great stuff. Make sure you take some time to explore that, look around. And whatever you learn, make sure you're sharing with the rest of the group. So there's just a quick run through of how to do the updates because with your Raspberry Pi, it won't be long until there'll be new cooler features and a new update for you to do. I hope you found this helpful. And if anything, at least you can see that it is possible that it can be done.